Step 5, SneakerNet. This is our final step about link architectures. And we're going to talk about SneakerNet. So first of all, what is SneakerNet? Well, classical networks are very complex systems, and they're also very costly to deploy, manage, and maintain. So sometimes it's not possible or for, user, for users to use them, or may, they may not wish to use them. The costs might be prohibitively high, or the bandwidth of the network could be insufficient or unreliable, or the users might have security concerns, meaning their data is too sensitive to be placed online. And this is where SneakerNet comes in. In SneakerNet, what you do is you store your information on a physical drive, and you physically transport the physical drive to a new place, so rather than uh, sending light as um, information carriers. And there's a, there's a quantum sneaker net as well. But first, we're going to discuss the drawbacks of the quantum leaks that we've uh, discussed so far. So even more costly than classical internet are the quantum links. We're talking about fibers with quantum repeaters, with BSAs or single uh, photon sources, entanglement for sources, every 20 kilometers or so along the fiber. Launching satellites into space is also extremely costly. Fidelities of the architectures so far discussed are also not very high. They might be enough for some applications such as QKD, but might be too low for more um, demanding applications such as distributed quantum computation. The line of sight, especially for the MSM link using satellites, might be an issue. All you have to do is you just block the beam or the weather is too bad and you lose the link. You cannot use it. Maintenance issues, especially maintenance costs, are also extremely high. And scaling and adding connections uh, could pose problems as well. Quantum SneakerNet addresses most of these drawbacks. And how it works is the following. It doesn't use any flying qubits. It only uses stationary qubits. Uh, we start with a node A that, that has some quantum memories, and it interfaces with a mobile quantum memory unit. This mobile quantum memory unit is capable of quantum error correction, and it, it has a large number of quantum memories. And what happens is that node A and the mobile quantum uh, memory unit, they create entangled pairs. And then the mobile quantum unit takes its half of the uh, entangled pairs and transports it all the way to node B, where it inter interfaces with node B and the qubits inside the memory are then measured out, meaning that we set up uh, this en entanglement between node A and node B without the use of flying qubits in the form of single photons. The requirements, of course, are that we require a mobile quantum memory unit with extremely long coherence times. We're talking about hours or preferably months. And in order uh, to um, achieve high average rate of communication or uh, entanglement distribution, we also require a large memory capacity. So think of either a plane or even better, a, co a container ship loaded with these quantum memories. Uh, just to give you uh, an idea of some numbers, uh, if, you'd call, if you consider NV centers in diamond placed in optical cavities, and each logical qubit is encoded with the help of 4,200 physical qubits, the storage time or the coherence time can be up to 40 days, so extremely long. And the logical error for this encoding is as low as 10 to the minus 10. So these are the sort of numbers that, are, uh, that we're talking about or thinking about uh, when we want to uh, achieve quantum communication without flying qubits using the quantum sneaker net. There is also a very big difference between classical sneaker net and quantum sneaker net. Classical sneaker net suffers from communication delay. You store your information onto a physical drive, which then needs to travel to uh, a distant location. So the information from node A to node B uh, mm, suffers from communication delay. On the other hand, this is not true in quantum sneaker net, where all we are doing is we are creating an entangled connection between two end nodes, so we're not really communicating yet. Once that entanglement is established, that's when the communication session starts. So, unlike the classical internet, there is no communication delay. So this concludes our discussion of quantum sneaker net and also our lesson on link architectures.